Okay, hello everyone. Uh, this is an additional video on uh, calculus. Uh, for starter, let me go for. Uh, uh, let's say we have a an inverse. Okay, you have an inverse. Uh, not inverse. Uh, wait, negative one. Okay. This is the inverse. Inverse of f of x. Okay, so if we would like to know, if we would like to know the derivative of the inverse. Okay, how we could make this uh, works in our um, differentiation. So first of all, we need to let this form becomes x equal f of y, right? And then we take the implicit differentiation. We take implicit, or let me take the ddx in the front like that. And then this will be becoming one equal, this is f prime y, and then multiply with the differentiations from y is actually dy over dx, right? It's the same thing when we deal with the implicit differentiation, when we deal with y, we are going to have the derivation of y is equal to dy over dx, okay? And then we could take this, or we could take uh, dy over dx. dy over dx is one over f prime of y, and y is actually our function. So this is one f prime of f inverse x, like that. Okay, so this is the derivative of the inverse. Okay. 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 After we learn about the inverse, let me get through the. Um, Example. Okay, so read the questions and solve the question if you if you can, or wait for my explanation after a few minutes. Okay, you can you can try it now. Okay, and you can pause the video if you want. Okay, let's start to solve this. So read the, the questions carefully that uh, if you read the questions, you, you, you know that the f of x is twice differentiable. So you can differentiate f twice. So we don't need any more proof of that because it was given in the information. So we know that first f of x is continuous because it's differentiable and limit because of the continuity then this will be equal to f of 1 okay, so the limit as x approaching 1 of f of x will be equal to f of 1 this is a continuity uh, theorem right and then if we look at the, uh, the expressions We look from here. We can write down that limit. Q minus eight is equal to limit. We'll, let's write all the stops. And then minus eight over x minus 1 multiplied with x minus 1, right? Okay, now we can make this x minus 1 here also get into the limit, okay, because of the limit law that we can, you could make it this way. So, 
because this is 18 so this is 18 and this is 0 right this is 0 this is 18 so we could have results is 0 okay and as a conclusion at our limit We could, by limit of law, we could write the limit inside this cube functions, minus 8, okay. And since this is equaling to our f1, then we could write this as f1 cube minus 8. And this is equal to zero here, right? Equal to zero. So F1 cube is eight. So F1 is two. So that's the the first questions, okay? Okay, now because we know the F1 is Two, then we could take it into our next questions. Okay. So we could write down that limit x approaching one of this limit and x minus one. Now we could write down with some process here. Let me write. Okay, we could factorize this cubic. So let's say we, we are having this a cube minus b cube, okay? We are going to have a minus b and then a squared plus 2ab, or not ab, sorry, ab plus b squared. So let's write down that f of x. Minus two. And then f of x squared. Plus two f of x plus four, okay, and x minus one. Okay, now let's break down all this stuff here. So f of x minus two is f of one, right? And this will be x minus 1. Okay. And this will be f of x squared plus 2f of x plus 4. Let me make a bracket like that. Okay. So we could find out that this part here is f prime x. Okay. So this is a little bit tricky. So first is uh, the trick is to identify the limit in which it will define the derivative, right? So the, the limit for that case is, if you remember, this will be the, the definition of derivative, right? This is f prime x. Now, we have this x and 1, okay, so as this x approaching 1, this become of our f prime, okay. So we could write down that this is f prime, f prime 1, okay, f prime 1. Or you could write, uh, f1 here f1 squared 
and then plus 2 f1 and then plus 4 okay so if we plug in the the x equal 1 and this will result in f prime 1 and multiply this is 2 plus 2 2 by 2 is 4 plus 4 is 8 8 plus 4 is 12 okay, so 12 and this is equal to 18 18 is the, the one that we have from the beginning is equal 18 like that now from here we know that f1 or f prime 1 is 18 over 12 or 3 over 2 so we get the f1 and f prime 1 okay now what's next the next is the f double prime 1 okay, I hope I have the space enough space here so how to take the double prime in the second informations we get this limit okay now to to simplify these equations okay what we are going to do is is a little bit uh knowledge on the x plus h if you remember let me write with a different color we can also can write the f prime x as limit if you remember this one this is also valid over h right and if you could think this form look at this okay can we make this forms becomes similar to what we have in the x plus h so the, the key the key point is to take some addition and then minus with with that the same uh, component and then separate this limit and make makes them in uh, its derivative definition okay let's do that so first let me write completely limit now it's already f prime so we are supposedly to see the the, the limit definition of this f prime we derive so we will have supposedly the result will be having the second derivative right so let's write that okay and then this equal okay so we minus with f prime 1 and plus f prime 1 okay okay now why we are needed this f prime 1 this is to, to define our second derivative so this will be the limit okay this will be this will be the f double prime right f double prime let's f double prime one right? and then the other part we still have plus remember because we have 3t here so let me get through 3 by 3 okay and this will be T. So we could have, let me maybe write 3t inside here. And again, this part, in this part, we could say that we are going to have our second derivative, or perhaps this is triple second derivative of 1, right? So we could take the f double prime 1 plus 3 f double prime 1 okay. and this will be 4 f double prime 1 and this will be equal to 
equal to 1. Okay, equal to 1. So f double prime 1 is 1 over 4. Okay. So we finish, we finish the part A, all the limit definitions, with the, uh, the first form, which is the, this part here. So this is the first form. This is the second form. The definition is the same. They are the first derivative in limit definitions, okay? Okay. Now next, we are going to, suppose we are going to to, uh, to have this, another function g, okay? Let's, let's start with that. Okay, let me start with, with this. And maybe just put the same uh, question here. Okay, now suppose we have the g, and we know that from f1, from the beginning, from the a, the part a, so let me write maybe here. So from part a, we know that f, uh, f1 is 2. Okay. And then we supposed to have g of x is f e to x. So we are going to put e to the 2x inside the function of x for g definition. Okay. And then the function h is an inverse function of g. Okay. So h of x is g inverse of x. Okay. Okay, now to make this more interesting, we could see that if we put x equal 2 for h, the g inverse is g inverse of 2. G inverse of 2, if you can think on the inverse, we need to switch this to, right? So we could write g of x. So we could write um, what will be this x? Or maybe uh, we could write. So we could say that when x is 2, right? When x is 2, oh, uh, maybe not, not really go, okay. So when x is 1, the f is 2. So f inverse of 2 is 1, right? So since g is actually f, so we could say that f inverse of 2 is equal 1. So we need to make sure that what will be if this is equal to 1, if this is equal to 1, what will be the x? So e of 2x is supposed to be 1. So x should be 0. So that means the g inverse of 2 is 0. Okay. I hope you get my, my, my idea here. Okay. So from the g prime x then, we will have f prime e to x, and then e to x, and then multiply by 2. So g prime 0 is equal to f prime 1 multiplied by 1 multiplied by 2. And from the part A, we know that this is 3 over 2. So this will be 3. And then g double prime. So 
So we are going to have um, f double prime e to x and then multiply with the e to x. Uh, wait a minute uh, to to this will be squared this will be 2 squared and plus f prime e to x and then e to x and then 2 and then multiply by 2 it's 2 squared again 2 squared Yeah, this is just a normal product rule. Okay, it's a normal product rule. So when the x is zero, when x is zero, this will be one, one, four, plus f prime one, one, four. So three over two, this will be one over four. So one, one plus six, it's seven, okay? Okay, and then what else? Okay, we have all the G. Uh, the objective is to find this H2, H prime 2, and H double prime 2. Okay, now we have g prime h of x multiplied with h prime x is equal to 1. So this is from hx is g inverse x. That's or we could write down this h is g inverse x. Okay, so x is g of h, so we implicitly differentiate 1 g prime h and h prime x, and that's why we have this. Okay, okay, have you get my idea here? And then derive one more, so product rule derive. So it will be g double prime h x and then h prime x, h prime x, right? And then supposedly to plus the g prime h x and then h double prime x. This is equal to zero. Okay, let's take x equal to, so this will be h2, h prime 2, h prime 2, plus g prime h2, h double prime 2 equal to 0. Okay.
Okay. Uh, oh, I think let me let me to make sure that we now let me move a little bit to down here. Okay. And this will be going down here. Okay. Okay. Now at x equal to now let me start from the first one. Let me start with this. Equal one. Okay. H equal to H equal to is zero, right? From here. Okay, so we could take the G prime zero, which is three, okay, and then H prime two. This is equal one. So three, H prime two equal one. So H prime two is one over three. Okay, I think we got the second one. Okay. And then another one will be from this so we substitute with 2 so sub x equal 2 so we get g double prime h2 okay now the h2 is 0 so we are going to have zero. H prime two is one over three, so one over nine. And then plus G prime H two. H two again is zero, so this will be zero like that. And then H double prime two. And then it's equal to zero. So G double prime is seven, so this will be seven. G prime is three. So seven over nine plus 3h double prime 2 is equal to 0 so we have negative 7 over 9 or h double prime 2 is negative 7 over 27 okay it's, it's really difficult but uh, as exercise this could help you to to solve the um, if you have the inverse okay you need to to check the relations okay, between all of this component here and yeah I must admit that for me this is also a quite difficult subject but uh, still we can solve it okay especially the first part okay? the first part is uh, by looking at this limit to two limit and we could take this two limit into our limit definition and we could relate that with derivative okay that's the idea and we we take that component and uh, to solve the second questions which has the inverse uh, function problem okay okay so yeah okay let's start with this uh, questions uh, we have a piecewise defined function of f of x it has three statements the first statement is this we have an exponential plus bx and then the second statement is this a constant m the third statement it has another exponential with some cubic root okay now we need to know that the f is differentiable everywhere okay what does it mean okay so let me start with differentiable is always start with it should be continuous continuous everywhere okay so when we deal with this x positive and x negative we can take that limit as x and we put the e we put the third statement And we just plug in zero. Plug in zero. This part here we can write. Let me write slowly. 
this can be E. So the, the bottom part here is uh, zero and it will be uh, infinity. So it will be one over infinity is zero, right? So we have, so this part is going to be zero and this part is going to be a cubic root of five, okay? And then we take the Uh, approaching zero from the left side, we have the a e with power of x plus b x, and this is just taking zero inside, and we see that it's going to equal to a. So, to be continuous, continuous function, then the limit. Of f of x need to be equal to and this is equal to f of x itself which is the the m so a equal m equal to this number okay so a is this constant m is also this constant and now we need to find b okay. and again it's differentiable everywhere differentiable everywhere we need to know that differentiable also means that it has derivative from the right and derivative from the left of course, this means that this derivative is by limit, limit definition, okay? So let's take limit. Let's take this definitions because I think it's easier to, to follow rather than the, the H1, right? So we put this into our uh, positive one so positive is e with power of negative 1 over x squared plus cubic root of x plus 5 divided by x. Oh, I forgot the limit. I need to wrote the complete sentence. Okay, if we take the limit, we are end up with, ends up with the, the L'Hopital roots, right? The L'Hopital roots that is uh oh wait 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 f zero f zero is negative okay now it's I think complete now if this is become zero this becomes zero this becomes zero and this is also zero. So this is a zero of zero situation. So if we can provide the L'Hopital rule to solve our problem, okay? So take the L'Hopital rule. So we differentiate the, the top one. This will be two e negative one over x squared over x cubed plus 1 this is 3 this become cubic root x plus 5 with square okay. and the other constant is 0 and x equal 1 okay. yeah I think this is the, the results and then we plug in 0 and we find out that this will be 5 negative 2 over 3 over 3 okay on the on the this right because this one is uh, becoming zero and then the limit from the left Again, we write f of x minus f0, and 
விட்டை கிடி நான் வி டேக் திஸ் காம்பனன் வி டேக் திஸ் காம்பனன் வித் பி ஸ்டில் எஸ் வேரியபிள் பி ஸோ வி டேக் ஃபைவ் ஒன் ஓவர் த்ரீ தட் இஸ் தி தி எம் அண்ட் ஏ ரைட் So this will be multiply with ex and plus bx negative we plug in 0 okay and then over x and again this will be a 0 over 0 situations oh, i forgot to write the limit let me write the limit first so we take l'hopital we take l'hopital This will be still ex plus b, okay, and this will be equal to, we plug in zero, zero plus b, and this is supposed to be equal with, with this, need to be, need to equal, okay, because differentiable everywhere so the results of these two need to be equal okay so b is five negative 2 over 3, 1 over 3, minus 5. Yeah, yeah, although it's not really good number, but uh, yeah, this is the result, okay? Okay, that's it, that, that's, um, I hope, although it seems a little bit complicated if you see the fraction here, uh, I hope you can get the idea on what the meaning of the differentiable everywhere. Okay, another questions that might be interesting is this one. So first, let's read the questions. So suppose that the f is differentiable. It's one to one, okay? And it's one to one on this interval, negative one to one. And it has the uh, derivative equations, f prime equal one plus f squared x. And limit f of x over x, a limit as x approaching zero, is exists. So this limit is exists. Okay. The first question is asking the f zero and its limit. Okay. And the second question is asking increasing uh, concavity and then proving the statement. And uh, the next one is the inverse, derivative of inverse, and then finding the inverse itself and the function itself. What kind of function we would have? Yeah, from all these statements okay so it's it's actually an interesting question that builds up the uh, so it's we don't really know what the function is at the beginning but all the statements will be um, will be uh, focusing or will be converged into one conclusions which is the function itself the, what what kind of function we will have at the end of the uh, uh, solutions right Okay, so you can pause the video, try by yourself, okay? Um, try one by one from A, B, C, D, because I think some part of the statement, uh, like for example, to know the last two questions, you need to solve at least the first two, okay, the first two questions, okay? So let me give you some time to, to check. You can pause the video and try by yourself, okay? and then come back to the video and see the solution. Okay, let's start the solution from the very first questions. Find f0 and the limit f of, f of x over x. Okay, so f is differentiable. This is from the statement, right? f is differentiable, right? f is differentiable. And because it's differentiable, it should be continuous. Continuous. Okay, should be. 
should be continuous. Okay. So therefore, f0 and limit sx, this should be equal. And then we know that this part is exists, right? The limit is exists. So we could write down, if you write down f of x over x and multiply with x, we know that this part limit is exists. So we know for sure when we limit this and we substitute x, <coughs> we are going to have a zero. Okay. Well, we if we want to make it like for sure this is true, we could, we could let the some some l is uh, our limit that it's supposedly to be exists. Okay, and then we could take this L and then zero, and it's still zero, to just to confirm that our um, assumptions are correct, okay? And since we have this, then we could also write for the second part of the question, so this limit, we need to, to find out what kind of limit is this. Then we could write this as f of x, minus f0 because f0 is 0 and defined by x minus 0 which is the definition of the first derivative at x equals 0 and we know that this f prime 0 from this statement so the f prime 0 is 1 plus f0 squared which is this is zero, so we we have one, okay. So this will be equal to zero and one for the first question for a, okay. Okay. The second question b show the function is increasing on this interval. Okay. So first we we would like to write the f prime x. And this is what we have and from the definition of the increasing we need to have this greater than one greater than than zero okay. so f prime x need to be positive okay. but still but we have this statement okay we have this statement we have a constant one so the last or the least minimal is one So we could write down that f is strictly increasing, okay? Because we have this is always positive, right? And we we start from from one. So on the interval, it's strictly increasing. And then for concavity. We are going to observe the second derivative. So we are going to take the, uh, or let me let me write again the first derivative, and then take the derivative of this first derivative. So we get the second derivative. This will be two f of x and then f prime x, right? Okay, since the f prime always positive, so, or uh, f prime x is always like greater than zero, and we know that uh, from the part A, we have the f0 is 0. So this f of x will be having uh, f of x positive, respectively.
And so, if we would like to take the uh, the line numbers, or maybe we could take the interval. So if we take the interval from negative one to one, then at x equals zero, there will be change of uh, signs. So we would like to take this, let's say we have this, So at zero one, at zero one, it's supposed to be, to be f is concave upwards and concave downwards. So this will be positive and negative. Okay. Oh, uh, wait, 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 wait. This is supposed to be to take that. Okay. So it depends on the f of x. So f of x, if it's greater zero, it's positive. If less zero, it will be negative. So it will be the, so. So we could take conclusion that f double prime x and f of x will be having uh, the same signs. Okay. What is the questions? Yeah, concavity. So concave, so concave upwards from zero to one and concave downwards from negative one, zero. Okay. That's number B. So move to number C. Number C is another statement, uh, how to prove statement. So let's consider a function h, which is f of x minus x. And from the part a and b, we get the h0 is equal to f0 is equal to 0. Okay. And if we take the derivative of h, we could take this minus 1. And f prime x is, uh, what is this? Uh, 1 plus f squared, right? 1 plus f squared, but it's minus 1, so it's supposed to be f of x uh, squared, which is positive, right? So h from, from these two statements here, so h is increasing on 0, 1, right? And we have, this is h. This always greater than uh, when it's equal to 0, okay? For x from zero, from x from zero to one, and then uh, maybe uh, I think I need to make this smaller. Okay. Let's make this smaller. Let's move here. Let's move around here. Move around there, move around here, move around here, okay. Okay, let's make another statement that we would like to have g. Let's say we let g of x equal to f of x minus x and then minus x cubed over 3. Okay, so when we have this, then we have g0 
is equal to f0 is equal to 0. And g prime x is equal to f prime x minus 1 minus x squared. So from this statement, we could get f prime x is 1 plus f squared. So we have f, uh, f squared minus x squared is always positive. And x is on 0 to 1 interval. Okay, now the last part here. We could see that if we want to prove this, then from this statement here, we could say that since this is always positive, okay, we could write that f of x minus x minus x cubed over 3 or we could call this function g is greater than g at 0 for every x at the interval one, uh, 0 to 1 okay so we could start with the first h we we just take this approach to prove that the f of x squared is always positive okay from our statement and then we take another function g to include this x cube over 3 okay and then we take that and make sure that okay we have now uh, the function that is also a positive function okay i hope you, you get the idea from from this part okay this is just um um it's so proving how to 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 take the um the statement you can assume with with other the function that you can think that it's always always positive okay okay number d and e let me write in the next page let me add another paper Okay, remember that when we have f inverse, if you would like to take the derivative, this will be 1 over f prime f inverse x, right? And our f inverse, if we, if we remember the definitions of the f prime in these questions, is 1 plus f or f of x squared so we could take this f inverse become 1 plus uh, f f inverse and then squared and f f inverse is just x so we have cancellations here in inverse remember that f f inverse x is just x so we could have this become 1 over 1 plus x squared okay that's for number d and for number e from the from the result on the part d we have 1 over 1 plus x squared so we see that f inverse, uh, or maybe uh, d dx of the f inverse x is 1 over 1 plus x squared. Okay, so what kind of functions that when we derive it, it, it is 1 over 1 plus x squared? So we could think that probably a tangent x will be uh, uh, our, uh, or, or let me 
right here is the or tangent inverse x is our functions okay so if f inverse is tangent x so f of x is tangent x Well, we could also confirm the C from the statement that uh, when we have an inverse 0 minus tangent inverse 0, this will be a constant, and the constant from all this stuff here is going to be 0. So we could confirm that the constant is 0, so the f inverse is just standing tangent inverse x, or we could confirm that confirm that the f inverse x is tangent inverse x and the f of x is tangent x.